In Season 1, Episode 8 of The Mandalorian Show on Disney, we got a glimpse of a droid, and I'm going to make that droid today. It was the fairy droid. I've got three figures here. These are all from the 90s, uh, maybe the early 2000s. And uh, you can see I have an R2-D2 here. He's got the light piping in there. And uh, we're going to be using these three figures to create this droid. Now, when I first saw this droid in that show, I was... I couldn't wait to get the figure. And they have released the figure in a Droid Factory 4-pack. And uh, I don't want any other droids in that whole 4-pack. So I'm not going to uh, get that droid. So I'm just going to make my own. So we get this battle droid here. I'm going to be using his arms. I'm going to be probably using his legs and torso. And uh, we're just going to cut it there. So... Uh, Let's get out the Dremel here and start cutting the parts. So this R4 droid, he's got the type of body that I need, and uh, he does have a feature where he opens up, and you can hit a button, and uh, you can shoot out a missile. I'm not sure if I'm going to utilize that or not. Uh, I guess I could make the head so that it would shoot off of the body, 
but I'm not sure if I'm going to do that at this point. So let's continue on. We're just kind of, I've got an idea, but I haven't exactly figured out all the features of this droid yet. So let's continue on. So I want to use this R2-D2 droid. I've got to get his head off. It's in chrome. Now I know the fairy droid does not have a chrome head, but I just think chrome is awesome. I love toys with chrome. So I want to make my fairy droid with a chrome head, which means I'm going to be using the head of this. Now don't worry, this isn't a vintage R2-D2. It's one I think from 1997, 1998. So we got to get this head off, and I'm probably going to be using the feet. Too. So I got to figure out a way to get this off. I think I'm going to use the hacksaw. That has proven to be a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. And uh, so there's our head. I might still use the light piping in there. You can see that on the inside. I never really knew how that worked, but now I can see in there how that works. That's pretty cool. So uh, I'm going to cut the feet off of this too, and we're going to use the feet. Now, I'm not quite a, a very good artist, but this is my idea of how I wanted to build this figure. I've been thinking about this for a long time, and I just kind of quickly come up with a blueprint of how I was going to utilize all of these parts from these figures. So, um, now I'm trying to figure out, do I want to use this as a way to have a play feature for the head? I might use that, I'm not sure yet. The only way to do it is to make it so that the projectile is connected to the head, which means my head would have no articulation. And I kind of want my head to articulate. So now I have to make a bottom piece for the head because I've decided to make it articulate. So I'm just going to cut out a piece of styrene in the same circumference as the head and uh, we'll glue that to the bottom of the head.
and that worked out pretty well. I'm going to use some of this plastic weld. It's Bondine Plastic Weld by Plastruck. You can get it on Amazon. That's where I got it. And I'm just going to glue this to the bottom of the head. I'm going to be using some plastic weld for some of this figure, but a lot of times I'm probably going to be using uh, Gorilla Glue or Crazy Glue just because there are some things I don't think the plastic weld is going to work with. This plastic, some of this plastic is pretty soft, and I'm not really sure if the bonding is actually going to work with it. So, and like I said, I'm going to use this Gorilla Glue and I'm going to glue the body together. I do think that the inside of this droid is pretty cool. It would be cool to be able to see inside it and uh, be able to see uh, the inside of the working part of the droid, but like I said, I don't want to um, use this as a projectile. I want to be able to articulate the head, so I'm just going to glue this all together. So it's all glued and it is dry. It's pretty strong and I've also had the head glued there and um, this is I'm still thinking about perhaps using the missile but I think I've decided that I'm not going to use it anymore. I want to articulate it like that so um, we're gonna have to make a piece to allow that to happen. I also have this piece of Lego. It's like a uh, ball joint. I'm going to connect that to the head so that it just pops in there. I also have these legs here and another Lego piece that I'm going to glue in between them because the original piece that was between the legs was uh, made the legs too close together so I had to extend those out by using that Lego piece. I know these feet and legs and arms don't really look like the fairy droid arms and legs but I think they're going to work for my droid I think it's gonna look cool now these legs still articulate but my arms will still articulate too because I cut them uh, past the shoulder so let's clean this up a little bit and uh, we'll glue everything together There, that works now. It's uh, it it clips in there, and I think it'll be nice and secure. Now to clean up the ball joint piece, and uh, we're just going to clean this up using my plastic nippers here, and we'll uh, I'm going to cut it as long as possible because I want to be able to insert that into the round styrene piece that I glued to the bottom of the head so we'll do that just got to clean this up and give it a little sanding here we go glue all the pieces together that we've cut apart from the other droids we'll let that glue dry and then we'll go to the next stage
So those legs are good. We're going to let those dry too. I'm going to clean off all that extra plastic uh, from the leg joints before I glue that on. So don't worry. We'll get that all cleaned up. Next, I'm going to uh, connect the feet to the legs. And I'm going to be using these little round, these are two millimeter styrene uh, round plastic pieces. And uh, I'm actually going to plastic weld these together. I think the plastic weld will work well. And we'll get that done. These already have holes on the bottom of them from the bottom of the holes, but they have holes that came all the way up where I cut it off. So I'm just, I didn't have to drill any holes. I just had to insert those in there and plastic weld them in, in place. I made sure that I didn't push these plastic pieces in too far because I still may want to use the holes on the bottom of the feet. Now I'm going to be using Gorilla Glue for this. I found that the Battle Droid plastic doesn't actually uh, work with my plastic weld. I have two different kinds of plastic weld um, liquid and uh, or glue or whatever it is. And I think this works better for that. So the bottom of the body had a little bit of a uh, raised part and I sanded that completely off. I didn't do that at first because I was going to use the missile mechanism, but I decided to sand that off completely. And I also cleaned up the leg joints there and cleaned up the plastic. I still need to put a little bit of a divider there and I'm going to be utilizing that for the articulation of the hips. So. I'm just going to drill a hole here. Now I only drilled a hole halfway through this, but then I decided to drill a hole all the way through. I don't think I filmed that, but I did drill a hole all the way through and I'll show you why later on in the video. I'm also going to drill a hole in the bottom of the head and this is where we're going to put that ball joint peg from the Lego piece that I made. Now, because this had some action features, there was a lot of uh, weird spots where there were some spaces, some openings so that the body could open up. I'm just using some styrene here and uh, I'm just gluing that in just to fill those gaps. And there's that yellow switch there. I will be painting that yellow switch so you don't see it, but I'm also going to glue that uh, in the in position so that the hole on the bottom there isn't interfered with that plastic switch. So here's a really cool Lego piece that I found. This is going to be great for connecting the body to the hips 
and also giving it articulation. And the nice thing is this thing has a hole all the way through the bottom. You can see that raised piece that I have there. I put a hole through that too. I glued that onto the bottom of the body and the plastic came all the way through, glued that into that Lego piece and we can cut that flush and then I'll file that flush and there's our glued piece it's all ready to go and it still allows me to articulate the figure you can also see where my switch has been glued in so I'm gonna use my calipers here I need to make a piece to go around the shoulders uh, this allows me to make the extra arms it does have four arms the two arms underneath the large arms are smaller so I'm going to use this pick guard material and I'm going to cut the circumference of the arm here uh, with this drill bit. And then I'm going to cut the two pieces out just in a square for now. Got some double-sided tape. We'll tape those together and that way when I make the piece, both of the pieces will be exactly the same. So I'm just using my belt sander here and uh, we're gonna belt sand this and uh, make it the shape we want. It'll make the job quick. So I'm going to do a little bit of uh, painting here. I got some red to paint because uh, this original R2 figure or R4 figure, it has a lot of blue and I have to uh, paint it all red because the uh, this has all red on it. So all the blue on this figure needs to be red and so those red stripes near the arms, those are going to have to be painted white because the fairy droid does not have that, those red stripes. Also the blue stripe above those two red stripes has to be black. So there's all kinds of painting to do. Let's do that and uh, get into it.
So all of this paint's going to need at least two coats, and then I'm going to put a coat of varnish on top of it, the Vallejo varnish, and I will do that off camera. But here is the color palette that I use. I've got some silver. I've got some uh, off-white with a little bit of grayish off-white. Now that I'm back home from the shop, here's those pieces that I fabricated. Now we have to make the extra arms. Now I cut those in half because we're going to have to glue those around the shoulder part. And so that shouldn't be too hard, but we need to make some holes in here. I want these arms to still be articulated. Uh, I don't think I'm going to be able to articulate the elbows for these extra arms. These arms are again from another battle droid, a different battle droid. And uh, this one didn't have a lot of articulation, but I'm still going to use these arms anyway because I don't care if these arms articulate. It's mainly the longer main arms that I want to articulate so that I can use him to hold the oar. So here's my pieces I have so far. I'm not really sure how I'm going to make these, but uh, we're just going to going to go freestyle here and uh, see what we come up with. So here's my arms so far. They're starting to look great. Now I just have to attach these to the shoulder extensions uh, that I've made. They're up on the top of the screen. We're going to let those dry a little bit and then we'll put it all together. There's my other one. I made this one a little bent so that they don't look exactly the same so that at least they look like even though they're not going to articulate at the elbows they'll still look like have a little bit of movement to the figure. This is for you, George Martinez Jr. He's a, 
uh, subscriber and commented on my video, I think, a year ago, a year and a half ago, maybe even two years ago. Uh, he's been a commenter for years anyway, and he told me a, a technique to use uh, to mushroom a piece of plastic. And that's what I want to do. I want these shoulders to be able to articulate, and I think the only way to do that is to use the technique that he gave me. I have not forgotten about a, a lot of your suggestions, and this is one of them that I thought I knew I would use eventually. And there you go. I just mushroomed that plastic. Once that gets cold, that will articulate, and it will keep the piece in there, and it won't fall out. As you can see, I did make two holes. One of the holes was a little bit uh, too low, so I will fill that hole in with another piece of this white styrene, the round stuff, and uh, you won't even know that I did it. Here's a piece here. I'll just cut this off and use this. I think that turned out really good. I'm really happy with what I've done here. It's one of my first customs from the ground up that I've ever made, really. I mean, I've done customs in the past where you switch around the parts and repaint like GI Joes and stuff, but I've never really kit bashed like this. So this was really fun. Expect some more of this coming up. Again, I had a really good time doing it and I expect that I'm gonna do some more of these in the future. So thanks for watching this episode of Toys Bag Zen. Please like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. If you have, I thank you very much for your support. If you have any more techniques that I can use for my customs, let me know in the comments down below. And don't forget to share this to other people that you think might like my content. Check out the rest of my catalog. I have over 170 videos. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.